Welcome to another episode of Rambling with Phil. Today we're headed to Leadville, Colorado to go dog sledding at the Winterhawk Dog Sled Adventures. And we're also going to be having a bite to eat at a local favorite. So keep watching as we head to our next winter adventure. Downtown Leadville. Historic Leadville. Say Sean Taste to Chinese restaurants. <laughs> Here we are at the dog sled place. They're getting the dogs all set up. Oh. That's such a nice view of the mountains over there. Oh yeah, right ahead is actually Mount Sherman, elevation 1442. I like feel late too much yesterday. Come on, no, come on, keep going. Come on. Come on, guys. You got it. Good dogs. You guys want to roll out? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Oh. Got it, got it. Are you out? Yep. All right, roll out. <laughs> you guys good? Yeah. We're just in a hurry to get out, that's all right. No. Yeah. No. You got the action shot. Yeah, I did. Is that it?
We saved it. All right. All right, we made it. Alive. Let's go over to our guide there. How was that? That was cool. I'm sorry about that one. That's all right. Good, good stuff for my video. Guys want to come here. I'm gonna introduce you to all the dogs that took you out there. Right. Oh, yeah, I got their names on the. You can give them some loving. So when does the season end? Uh, it's really whenever the snow is just gone. Mm. Yeah, we'll be mm -hmm. taking reservations pretty much till any point till then. Uh, usually it's sometime in April, beginning mm -hmm. to middle, middle of April. Um, we still have snow at that point, but the dogs, believe it or not, they just get so hot. Mm. You know, it could be negative 10 out at night and they'll just be sleeping in the snow on yeah, their back. Yeah. Sprawled over. And if y'all want to follow me in here, I'll take you on a tour of the kennel, introduce you to some of the dogs we didn't just run, okay. and show you a little bit of how we feed and take care of them. Uh, the way I like to think of it, we have three different types of dogs. Shy dogs, which you will find out when you walk up to that dog, and that dog goes, oh. All right, that's our cue to find the next dog. We don't want to stress them out. Then we have calm, fantastic dogs. They're just like, love me, pet me. And then we have Hyper lovable dogs. Yes, Lance being one of them. Uh -huh. We have a lot of dogs that want to love you. They want you to love them. The way they're going to show that to you, they're going to jump up and put those paws on your chest. All right? I can usually let you know who those dogs are before we get over there. If you're fine with that, so are they and so are we. If not, just take a step back. Uh -huh. Each one of those blocks is 50 pounds, and 70% of the dog's diet is raw beef, which is what is best for the dogs, especially when we're running them yeah. to the degree we're running them. Now, they get it in a couple, couple different forms. Every morning, we start with something called baited water. These dogs actually don't love water. They love meat, so we put meat in the water. That's meat dust. Put that in their water in the morning, along with a little bit of kibble and a couple chunks of meat. Acts like a doggy Kool-Aid. Especially up here in the colder mornings, we'll give them a ladle of water. It can freeze completely in 10 minutes. So we want them to be like really about what they're drinking. They will also get a snack. <laughs> Chunko beef, right? About this size. And this is the largest we will give the frozen beef to them, is this. This is a perfect size. They can chew on it, chomp on it. It's not gonna hurt them. They can make it through really easily. And they absolutely adore it. It's a great way for us to make sure that they're getting calories throughout the day as well. So they'll get a scoop of that baited water and a treat after every time they run. Once in the morning before they run, once after the first run, once after the second run, which is what we just did. We have another run later today. And then they'll get their meal, which looks, starts out looking like this. Uh huh. That is the meal for one team. Oh, for a team. All right, okay. so that's 12 yep. or 13 yep. dogs. Yep. We're gonna get that much beef, but I'm not just gonna throw chunks of beef at my dogs. That goes very poorly. <laughs> so what we do every morning is we take a pot of hot water, pour it into a bucket just like that right there, and mm. make them a soup. And I'm gonna break this up. It gets a little bit cooked on the outside, but you can see yep. that it stays very raw on the inside. That's really just to melt the beef. And then at the end of the day, this will actually end up getting split into two buckets, refilled with water so we can keep them really well hydrated. Each dog will get about three ladles that look like that. Wow, that's a lot, yeah. Rupert, up on the top of the hill, he gets five. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. We'll get three of those ladles, and then we also do supplement their diet with a kibble. Um, it's not your average dog kibble, though. It is the, oh, it has a ridiculous name, like the <laughs> Super Athlete Performance Dog Formula, <laughs> I think is what it's called. 
Uh, exactly. It's like, ugh, it's really over the top. But it does have about twice the fat and three times the protein that you're gonna find in a normal large dog food. And that's also really where we like adjust their diet to the dog. Mm. So when I'm going to feed a dog, I give them their three ladles and then I'm gonna look at that dog. I'm gonna say, are you a large dog, medium dog, or a small dog? And they're gonna get usually between two or three cups based on that. And then, more importantly almost, I'm gonna say, are you at weight, above weight, or underweight? So silver is a great example right back there. Silver is at a really good weight. And the way that we tell that, one of the best ways to tell that on our dogs is the hip bones. Mm -hmm. So you can see Tyrion over here is a little bit underweight. And the way I know that is you can see both of his hip bones sticking up in the back. So when we go to feed Tyrion, I'm gonna give him what he gets for his size and then a little bit extra. Yeah, sir, I have a little bit more of that because that's great now. And yep. the greyhound really shows there. Yeah, so that's, I'm honestly not as concerned with the ribs. Yeah. Okay. The ribs are not, you know, a lot of our dogs will very naturally and healthily show ribs. Like Paula up there, I could force feed her for days and she'd still be showing ribs, you know? Um, Blake, who was running in the back on my team, that big dark dog up there behind Mocha, a really large black dog in the back, I feed him sometimes up to five scoops a day. Wow. Cannot get him to put yeah. on a lot of weight. Yeah. Um, and that's really how we take care of them. We also have a small veterinary clinic that we run out of this building here. A lot of different medications, mostly stool related if we're all being honest, yeah. stool and worm related. Yeah. But each of the mushers is assigned to a team. So for instance, I have the black team. That means I'm responsible for those dogs for the winter. When I'm here, I'm feeding them, I'm taking care of them. I need to keep a really good eye on them when they're running and when they're in the kennel. So if there's any sort of problem with the dog, loose stools, you know, potential for worms, they get cut somewhere or something like that, it's my job to make sure that that's identified and then that we can deal with that effectively. And having one to two mushers per team means that we have eyes really specifically on each dog all the time. I mean, working here, your life becomes dogs. It's not a bad life. We, when our dogs are healthy, we're running well, so everybody wins. These dogs are actually bred specifically, the Alaskan Husky breed uh -huh. is bred specifically to have this kind of like almost webbed... That's what I it's really Yeah, it's like a their webbed paw, paw mm. thing and their pads are very tightly packed, which is great for us yeah. because one of the big, like the things you got to watch out for in a lot of sledding is getting ice balls in between their feet. Mm. That happens more so on like longer or overnight excursions, um, but these dogs are bred like specifically against that. <laughs> Excuse me. No, they look great. Yeah. They, look We're in Leadville and we just finished our dog sled adventure and we are going to the world famous High Mountain Pies established in 2003. So this is the open boat. It has a pesto base with light mozzarella, chicken, calamaro, 
olive, roast, red pepper, and barbecue drizzle. Looks pretty good. This is a pepperoni pizza. And that is the alligator. Crocodile. I was gonna say crocodile, but somebody confused me. I apologize. And this is tricky. How's that? Tasty, yet interesting. Crust is nice and crusty. Crunchy. Leaving Leadville, Colorado. I think it's been a really good day. We had, uh, we went, um, we did not go snowshoeing. That's what I wanted to say. But actually we went snow, snow. Dog sledding in the snow. And if you don't know what that is, well, what were you doing when you were watching my video? Yeah. But obviously that's dogs pulling a sled. And then we went to um, High Mountain Pies. We had some pizza. But then again, if you've been watching my video, you already know that. But anyways, it was a really good day in Leadville. If you're in the area, definitely check it out. If you're here in the winter, there's a bunch of cool things to do. We also saw a bunch of uh, uh, cross-country skiers which was and they were like on the same trail that we were on with the dog sleds so we just had to well we didn't we were just sitting there but you know the, the guides had to basically you know make sure the dogs don't uh, you know run into the uh, cross-country skiers but I hope you like this video which hasn't been made yet and hit like and maybe there might be a little surprise ending on this one so keep watching. Oh, hey, how you doing? Thanks for watching my video, and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rambling with Phil. <laughs>